I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about She Came Back After Two Years of No Contact. When this happens and somebody finally reaches back out, you're often shocked. But I'm not, because I see these things all the time. Now, if you're in a situation where you and somebody just broke up, I understand the confusion and not knowing what to do or not being ready to move on yet. It's totally understandable and everybody's in a unique position and feels differently about it. I won't advocate anybody put their life on hold for two years or anything like that after a breakup. But I understand some people really struggle to move on and even two years later, they're stuck on somebody. For me, it's really about healing growing while you're in no contact, learning how to behave in an attractive, confident way. And that way, either your ex comes back and you know how to repair things with them or you've moved on and you're doing great with dating other people because quite frankly, many clinicians in the world don't even know the stuff that we're teaching here, let alone, you know, the people that are out in the dating pool, right? So. Even the stuff that I teach with, you know, attachment theory and mental health, this is relatively new to the field. And even when I was in my grad program, they weren't talking about attachment theory yet. So this is still stuff that's cutting edge in many ways. And I've been doing it and talking about it since we started the channel. And this is why I did workbooks, okay? And the creative healing course because I knew the stuff that I'm teaching is gonna help you have healthier relationships with anybody that you date. And that was the goal because you can't control what happens with an ex. You can't control them and you can't force somebody to wanna to be in your life. But when you put yourself in a position to be confident with them or anybody else, it's a win-win regardless of what happens with them. So we got an interesting story today where uh, an ex came back after a couple of years. This is an email coaching that I recently did. Uh, and let me just get, uh, get right into this one. I think you'll like it. They said, Dear Coach Craig, I would like to contact you regarding an ex who reached out and then went silent. We met at work four years ago when I was in my mid-30s and her in her late 20s. In that time, I had a hard time with my marriage and I have a couple of kids and we were going through a divorce. Divorce really can leave you debilitated in a lot of ways. It's emotionally exhausting. It's scary. It's confusing. People are often very hurt and angry. And a lot of times people are really reconsidering and rethinking their life in many ways. It's a hard time for him. We connected really well, but she didn't want to date me because of my marriage. See, so he wasn't divorced. She left my work and re we reconnected again on social media two years ago after the divorce. I asked her out and we hit it off really well. For me, it was one of these rare events where I met a woman so interesting, funny, intelligent, and attractive. Yeah, sometimes we find somebody that we just really click with and we really wanna make it work. And that's why I'm saying, if you heal those attachment issues that you have and learn the skills that we teach and you really are able to implement it, you're gonna naturally be very confident with the people that you're crazy about. If you don't, you're gonna act out all of your insecurities and they're gonna 
hurt the connection. They decrease the connection and the attraction. So you've got to really work on these things while you're in no contact. If you don't, it's going to come back to get you. I promise you. Because we all have some kind of attachment issues and they come out when we get attached, when you're crazy about somebody. I was blown away and sadly also acted that way. See what I mean? He acted insecure. Let's see what happened. In our short relationship, which only lasted a few months, she became colder and drifted away, which made me really anxious. This is exactly what I'm telling you guys. Think about what I've just said and what just happened here. Uh, when you have attachment issues and you're excited about somebody, you're thrilled about them, you're crazy about this person, these things are likely to happen, okay? He probably came on really strong because he was really valuing her, saying, oh, she's so interesting and funny and intelligent and pretty. And then he can't control himself in that moment. And he's probably smothering her. I bet that was part of the issue. She could sense that he was coming on too strong. I made all the mistakes one could make at that moment. I over-communicated, didn't give her space, and eventually she broke up with me. Now they weren't dating for very long, so maybe she was hung up on somebody else at the time. She had somebody in the background that she had been talking to. Maybe it wasn't going well, who knows? Uh, that could have been part of it as well. But it does sound like it also had to do with his insecurities coming out, right? He's telling us, over-communicated, she's getting cold, probably smothering her. I was heartbroken and begged and pleaded and even sent her a cringy letter. I know he didn't learn that from my channel. <laughs> I deeply regret that period now as I don't recognize myself and how I was that. Boy, isn't that true? When you're going through a breakup, you don't even recognize yourself. Some of the things that you say and you do and you're so overwhelmed with anxiety, you're like a different person. You're like, who am, who am I? Uh, you know, I talk to people all the time. They're driving past their ex's house. They're stalking them. They're losing emotional self-control. And those are the attachment traumas that came up from your early childhood. That's why you're doing it. So you got to work through those. They're not easy to do, right? It's not easy to do that. That's why I have like the creative healing course, which is really in depth in going through attachment is issues, going through the story of your life, recognizing those things so you can fix them. In the meantime, I got my act together, worked out, did a full triathlon, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, and did major process at work. However, she always stayed on my mind. Fast forward two weeks ago, when all of a sudden, I was surprised by a message she sent to me after two years of no contact. I'm not surprised. I see this all the time. I was surprised by 50 years, okay? That, that was the record. That's the one that surprised me, 50 years. But two years, no, not a surprise. She said, hi, it's already a long time that I'm dying to write you. Despite all what happened, you are still someone who means something to me, but I wanted to respect your wish to not contact you. So think about what she's saying here, okay? She's been dying to write him for a long time. Despite everything that happened, you've meant so much to me, and the only reason I didn't reach out is because I was trying to respect what you told me. He said, I asked her not to contact me if she only wanted to be friends after the breakup. I wanted to ask you out for a drink. This is her again. And I hope we can catch up on lost time. She also asked in another message if she could come visit me after at work, after a medical exam she had to do. Look at that interest. And this is what happens all the time with exes. Their interest is low. You don't know what it is. They've disappeared and bam, look at how strong she's coming on here. Asking him out for a drink, telling him all this stuff. Uh, and saying she wants to stop by this, uh, I guess his work, 
after a medical exam or nearby his work, whatever. I was surprised that she immediately wanted to see me at work out of the blue after two years and didn't want to reply immediately to give myself some time to, re to reflect. Sure, no reason to rush. You know, you could sit on it, relax a little bit, stay calm. You, don't, you want to be centered and you don't want to look eager. I said that I was busy at work, to which she replied, it's good that you're pursuing your dreams. Like I said, I'm dying to hear from you. If you're interested, I would be more than happy to see you. Have a nice weekend. Okay, so it sounds like it's going pretty good so far. Let's go on. I reflected the weekend if I wanted to see her to be on the right mindset and sent her a message that, of course, I want to meet up, only this week is really busy. How about next Thursday? After all that time, a week more or less won't make a difference with a winky face. All right, let's see what she does here. She then replied, there is a risk that I am on holiday with my best friend who always organizes things at the last moment. You're right. A week won't make a difference. Winky face. We'll keep in touch and have a nice week with a hugging emoji. That was one week ago and I haven't heard back from her again. So he's getting anxious. I know that feeling. You're getting anxious already. You're getting eager and anxious. And you got to remember, you haven't heard from her in a couple years. You don't know what she's been doing. You don't know how much she has changed, grown up, or what she's been through. So don't put her on a pedestal, which you're kind of doing. I know you're getting eager and excited. It's natural. It's normal to do that. But just pull back a little bit, okay? To me, it felt like she had a nostalgic moment when she reached out and her last message I was convinced that she would back away again like she did in the past. Okay, so you're interpreting things and it's getting you anxious. Like you're seeing that you've already put this meaning behind it. Oh, she was just feeling nostalgic and now she's going to back away again. Now that's possible. She could do that, but you you know what not to do. You know you're not going to chase her. But let's see, you know, that I think you're jumping the gun a bit on what she's going to do here because you're anxious. My question is, what should I do in this situation? Wait it out again and go no contact? Thanks for your help. Okay, well, she said she's going on vacation and or that she probably was. And she was pretty honest in letting you know she was going with a friend so you wouldn't think anything of it. That's why I think she gave you that detail. So I think she's interested in you and I think you just have to be patient. I wouldn't reach out. You know, you sent a calm message saying, hey, a week's not going to make a big deal. And she agreed. So you just have to stay calm and relaxed. Don't look eager. Your goal here is to just have a good time. You haven't seen her in a couple years. Like I said, you really don't know who she is at this point, how may she may have changed, um, what she's looking for what she's thought about all this time. And also you have to remember that you guys were dating for a couple of months, a couple of years ago, and she kind of disappeared on you and got cold. Now maybe it was your behavior, um, but based on your level of anxiety here, you could wind up making those same mistakes if you're not cautious. So I would just take her out, have fun, she might have an avoidant attachment style. We don't have enough info here, but I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, so just get to know her. That should be your goal here. Just take her out, treat her like you're on a date with somebody that you haven't seen in a long time and you're just having fun with her. And see if she says anything about why she disappeared the last time around. I'd wanna know. Now, I wouldn't wanna spend too much time on that and you may not, necessarily do that on the first date here but before you get attached to this woman i'd want to know well what happened last time when we were dating you kind of disappeared on me and see what she says about that but for the meantime i think she's interested in you you just have to relax 
you're getting really anxious about it already, which is understandable, but that tells me that you got some more work to do on your anxiety and managing your anxiety. So if you haven't considered the creative healing course or the workbooks, I would get on that because you might have an avoidant here. And if you don't have an emotional self-control with an avoidant, it's not gonna last. It takes patience and understanding and giving space. But when you're dating somebody who makes you anxious, it's real easy to mess those things up. So I think you're gonna hear from her. Focus on all the things that I told you. Go out, have a great time, but also find out what she's been doing the last couple of years. Who knows? All right, so hopefully this one's been helpful to you guys. Of course, if you wanna get my help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You also can get my creative healing course or my knowledge workbooks there. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.